Hi there express van owners or flat towers. Today we're going to be taking a look and showing you how to install Kurt's Class 4 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2011 Chevrolet Express van. And this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. It is going to be a Class 4 hitch with a 2-inch receiver, so it's going to be great for all of your towing needs. It does stick down below the bumper, so it is going to be visible all the way across the back. But I mean, it's a van, so it kind of just makes it look like this is a little bit heavier duty, more capable van than it was before. You'll secure your accessories to your hitch using a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now, one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at e-trailer. And you can also get locking ones to protect your investments. On bottom, we have plate style safety chain loops that have a moderate sized opening. That should work with most safety chains here. Let's see, our small guy has no problem. And our big hook here, also doesn't have any problems. That's nice to see since this is rated for such high weights. We wanna be able to use those big hooks. And with this being a class four hitch, it does offer some pretty impressive capacities to it. It has a 1,000 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of our receiver. And that should be more than enough for most things you're wanting to put in here. Uh, it'll take the largest cargo carriers here at e-trailer all the way loaded up to the max. And it's about 10% of its carrying capacity. So you should easily be able to haul some pretty big campers with this hitch. As far as the gross towing capacity goes, that's going to be 10,000 pounds, so that's how much that it can pull behind it. So with 10,000 pounds, it does really unlock a lot of potential for your van here. You could easily pull a large camper. Uh, you could probably pull a car hauler behind you. I mean, this thing can really just handle a whole lot of stuff. So it's really nice that it's got those huge weights uh, that should be capable of pulling just about any trailer that you're going to want to hook to a two-inch receiver. Those weights do increase a little bit when using a weight distribution system. A weight distribution system will take some of the weight that's loaded down here on the back of our vehicle and redistributes it up onto the front axle, restoring lost handling and ride height. And you can, we got a bunch of different styles of those here at e-trailer, so you can take a look at those to get the best one that works with your trailer and vehicle combination. When using a weight distribution system, our tongue weight increases to 1,200 pounds and our gross towing capacity increases to 12,000 pounds. Now, as always, I recommend that you verify in your vehicle's owner's manual and ensure you don't exceed any of its towing capacities. Now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, we're right at about four inches. This is important when determining if your accessories will contact the bumper when inserted, and if they can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. And from the ground to the top inside edge of our receiver tube, we're right at about 16 inches. This is important when determining if you need a drop, a rise, or a raise shank on your accessories. Now that we've covered some of the features of our hitch, why don't you follow along with us in the shop and we'll show you how to get it installed. This is an extremely easy hitch to get installed. If you don't have a hitch already on your vehicle, this would be able to just kind of slap right up and put into place. You could probably do it in about 15 to 20 minutes. If you do have an old hitch in place, a factory one, you're upgrading to a larger weight capacity like this one here, then you will have to remove that old one and also move your electrical connectors. We're gonna be showing you how to do all of that. It's not gonna really add that much time. I would say you could probably still get all that done in less than an hour. All right, we'll start our installation underneath the vehicle here by removing our electrical connector. If you've got one from the factory on there, it's on your welded in bracket here. There's a small tab right here. We'll take a little screwdriver or something to press in on that tab. After you press in on that tab, we can rotate it and that'll slide out of there. That'll make it a little bit easier to access the connector here. If we look at the connector, it's got this gray material on it that's a locking tab. So we'll use our screwdriver here to help press back on the locking tab. There we go, and then we can press in on the button now and separate the two components. And it can be a little tricky sometimes to get these disconnected because here at the back of the vehicle, it's susceptible to a lot of dirt and debris that gets up in there. So if that's the case, sometimes it's easier to get a smaller screwdriver and actually pull up on the tab from this side of the connector because all that dirt and debris that gets in there prevents the release tab here from actually releasing the, uh, the connector. So we're just going in here and we're pulling up on the lock tab to get it released because it'll be a little bit easier from this direction. There we go. Let me separate the two pieces. This piece you can keep, just keep it with your hitch. We're just gonna set it aside for now, but we had to get those connect disconnected so that way when we pull our hitch off, it's not still connected to our connector. Now we'll remove our bolts that run down the side. Putting a little bit of penetrating oil on it that can help break the rust loose. You can get that at your local automotive store. We'll then use an 18 millimeter socket and wrench to hold the nut or the bolt head on top so it doesn't rotate. And then we'll grab our impact gun here 
with an 18 millimeter socket on it to remove that nut. And what I like to do, this very first one here, this is the closest to the back of the vehicle, so it's gonna be the easiest one to remove later on. After we get that removed, we're just gonna thread it on here about a turn. So that way when we take out all the rest of our bolts, when the hitch drops down, it'll be supported by one on this side, and we're gonna leave the same bolt on the other side, just like this to keep it held up for us. Now we're just gonna remove the rest of these bolts here, just leaving those two at the very back here on the edge in place. And then we're just gonna repeat this over here on the other side. And then with the next set of hands, we'll take those two nuts off that we had threaded on there and we'll lower this down and get it out of our way. It is pretty heavy, so I do recommend that extra set of hands. Now we'll put our new hardware into place. Take your carriage bolts and your spacers, slide it through your spacer like that. And then we're just gonna push this right into the frame here. So this is one of our factory bolts. We're gonna take that one out. This is gonna be replacing it as well, but we're just going right in the opening in the frame here and we're just dropping it right down. We'll do the same thing with the other hole here at the front, uh, at the rear of the vehicle, and then the rearmost hole of the two that are here. We want the one closest to the rear. Once we get those three in place, we'll repeat this over on the other side to get those hardware pieces in place. Now with an extra set of hands, we'll lift our hitch into position, lining up the holes in our hitch with the bolts that we dropped down through the frame. Once we get it in place, we'll get a nut started on each side, and this will hold it up, ensuring that the hitch can't fall down, making it easier to install the rest of our hardware. We can then go back and tighten down our hardware with a three quarter inch socket. And then we can torque it to the manufacturer's specifications. So now that we've got our hitch all the way torqued down, the hitch installation really is complete, but we wanna get our electrical connector back up and running again. Unfortunately, the connector from the factory doesn't really have a proper mounting spot on it. It doesn't attach with any uh, screw holes or anything. It's kind of proprietary to slide into that bracket. So we're gonna be putting a different end on it. This is one from Hopkins, and this looks very similar to a factory uh, Chevy connector that you would find on the back of your truck. It's actually a, makes a great replacement if you got a damaged one. So we'll be mounting this up onto our hitch. To get that mounted up, we're gonna also be using a long bracket. You can get those long brackets here at each trailer. That's these guys here. This will give us a mounting location without having to drill into the vehicle whatsoever. We're gonna clamp it right onto our hitch here. So we're just gonna take the clamp that comes with the long bracket, slide it on through. We're gonna work that around our hitch. Slide the clamp into itself. And then we can go ahead and kind of tighten this down some. We'll use then an eight millimeter socket to finish tightening it down. We can do that here on the back side. Nice and solid, we can take this and bend it up and then we'll cut the excess off here once we get it installed. You'll get some hardware with your bracket as well. We'll use that hardware to attach our new connector. Our new connector here will sit right on top. We'll take the bolts that came with our long bracket here, line up with these slots, slide our bolt through, and secure it with a nut on the other side. We'll then do the same thing with the other hole here. Slide this one up through and secure it with a nut. And before we get it all the way tight, we still got a little bit of an angle here because we may need a little bit of an angle to get that connector plugged in. So we'll get our connector plugged in now, line it up with the appropriate spot, make sure it clicks all the way in. Looks like everything's good there. I'm also gonna put some dielectric grease on this. So we're gonna pop it back out just for a second, just to put some dielectric grease on it to ensure a long lasting connection. And then we'll connect it back together. 
For the most part with these, I usually just hold the nut because it usually grips and just tighten it down just like that. And that completes our installation of Kurt's class four two inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2011 Chevrolet Express van.